Hello everyone and welcome to another Plexus 2D tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to model a Osterberg cell test by conducting a verification study of a journal article that did a finite element method or finite element analysis of an Osterberg cell test. So let's look at this journal. So this journal article is written by Michael and Jaroslaw. And the title is Osterberg Test as an Alternative Pile Testing Method, and you can find it on ResearchGate. So if you scroll down, you can find the abstract here and introduction. You can read them on your own free time. And these are the principles here of the Osterberg cell test. So a brief recap. So an Osterberg cell test is a type of uh, pile testing method that places a hydraulic cell here, and it will generate an upwards force and a downwards force here. So this part of the pile is moving up, so the swell friction will try to act downwards. Whereas for this part of the pile, the reaction from the soil is to go up in the sense that you can see since this part of the pile is going down, the reaction would definitely go up in this direction. So now we scroll down. You can read on the advantages and disadvantages of the Osterberg test. And now chapter 4 is the most important part for our video today. So this is the section on numerical simulations of the Osterberg test and I've highlighted all the things that are important here. So over here we have a pile under test which is having a diameter of 0 0.40 meters here and a length of 8 meters. And the soil, we are only using one material here, sand. And it is modeled as a more Coulomb material. And the parameters of the sand are here. And the pile is modeled as a linear elastic material. So you can see we only need to key in the stiffness and the unit weight of the pile. And it says that the calculation conditions are axisymmetry since we are dealing with a circular pile. And the calculation model was set to 5 meters wide and 20 meters deep. And the interfaces between pile and soil were kept as one. And one thing to quickly note is that the O cell is only about 10 centimeters thick here. And it is said that uh, before the calculations began, the O cell has the same material as that of the pile. And when the O cell was uh, activated, the material of this part was deactivated to minimize interaction between upper and lower pile section. So moving on to Plexus 2D, I'll just call this uh, Osterberg cell test verification study and for model I will just change the model to axis symmetry and I'll keep it at 15 noted elements here x max will be 5 meters and y max will be 20 based on what the article mentioned and for the unit weight of water I'll just keep it at 9.81 and cloud services I'll keep it as is because there's nothing to change and I'll click on OK now we need to go and define our soil strata, so we need to click on the borehole tool over here. I'll place it at 0, 0, and I'll add one layer, and the bottom will be minus 20 meters here. And there's no mention of the head being uh, lower than 0 meters or not, so I'll just leave it as is. And for the materials, I'll just click on materials here and click on show global. And I'll import the materials that I've used before. So I've already found them and I'll just click on this arrow here to import them. So now let's uh, go through the material properties one by one. So let's look at sand first. So if you see, it says that the sand is modeled as a more Coulomb model. So you can see the material model for the sand here is set to more Coulomb. 
and the drainage type is not known so I'll just assume that it is drain and for the unit weight I'll just keep it at 20 because there's no mention of uh, any difference between the saturated and unsaturated unit weights and moving on to the parameters tab here you can see the stiffness is 40 megapascals here or also known as 40,000 kilopascals here and the Poisson's ratio is set to 0 0.3 and shear modulus and the E odometer is given automatically and then moving on to CU we have 1 kPa so I key in 1 over here and the 5 value is set to 32 degrees as set here as well and the dilatancy angle is set to 2 degrees here so this is all set up correctly already for the parameters here moving on to groundwater I'll just keep it at standard and keep it at coarse and for the thermal options I'll just keep everything at zero because nothing is mentioned here at all even if you scroll down there's nothing mentioned of thermal properties so we'll just keep everything at zero Moving on to interfaces, this is where it's important because it mentions R inter over here. And you can see it is said that R inter is supposed to be 1. So it is already correctly set here as 1 and initial for the K0 settings. You can just keep it at automatic over here. So that is all for the sand material for this video. So I'll click on OK. Moving on to the pile. So it says that we are using a linear elastic material model over here. So this is set accordingly and most piles are usually set to non-porous here and the unit weight is 24 kilonewton per cubic meter. And moving on to parameters here, you can see that the stiffness of the pile is 30,000 megapascals or it will be the equivalent of 30 million kilopascals here and the Poisson's ratio is not mentioned here so we'll just uh, put 0 here and for groundwater there's nothing to set up here because it's non-porous already and there's nothing to set for thermal settings and for interface we can see that our inter is 1 so we just make sure that this is 1 here and for the initial tab here, the K0 settings can be kept as automatic over here. So click on OK. Click on OK. And I will assign the sand material for the soil strata here. And I'll click on OK. Moving on to the structures tab here, this is where we need to define the pile. So I'll place some points randomly, then I'll fine tune their locations and that's about right for now so since the pile has a diameter of 0 0.4 meters here and since we are using an axis symmetry condition it means that we need to use a radius of 0 0.2 meters here so if I put in 0 0.2 here that is the radius of the pile and we just need to make sure that all the other points are kept at x is 0 0.2 and we need to make sure that the bottom uh, points would be 8 meters underground so this has to be 8 so I'll key in minus 8 here and I'll key in minus 8 And if you scroll down, you can see that there is a OSL placed at one and a half meters above the pile base. So these uh, two points need to be moved to about minus 6.5 meters here. And since the OSL is about 10 centimeters thick, as you can see here, we need to move these uh, 
other points to about minus 6.4 here and once we've done that we need to define the material for our pile so we can click on create soil polygon and I'll create a soil polygon for our pile like so and now we need to assign the material so click on show materials here and I'll click on this uh, pile and drag it over here drag and drop and that's it for this pile here we've already modeled it but there's one thing that we really need to pay attention and that is the boundary conditions here so these uh, vertical lines represent a horizontal fixture and these uh, squares over here if you will these represent completely fixed boundary conditions and this uh, line over here with no green lines at all represents a completely free surface over here so it's unrestrained at the top and we need to draw two lines over here so that we can make the mesh more refined in this zone the dimensions are not mentioned for the zone over here where the mesh is supposed to be finer so we can just set it arbitrarily so in this video I will start that zone at about 10 meters underground and move over to 2 meters on the x-axis here so it should look something like this so it looks quite close I would say to the model depiction here and we need to make sure that we use a uniform distributed load at the top plate and bottom plate so I'll quickly create a line load here uh, hit escape twice if you don't see the cursor so I will draw one like this and since this load is supposed to act upwards I will get rid of the negative sign so this is the upward load acting on the top plate and I'll create the downward load acting on the bottom plate and there we go so we already have the load acting at the bottom plate and the load acting at the top plate inserted into the model already if you notice uh, I haven't really entered any load values here you don't have to worry about entering them here we can enter them during the stage construction phase and one thing that this journal article fails to mention is the presence of these symbols here plus plus and negative so this is actually an interface here and I just have to determine by I as to how far this interface is from the pile over here so if we look at the uh, Plaxis 2D here uh, I would say the interface is somewhere around here so I'll create an interface so hit escape twice if the cursor doesn't appear so I should probably place it maybe at 0.4 so I have to draw down and then draw up in order to get a positive interface here so I'll just put it at 0.4 I guess and place this at 0.4 and if you see here the extension is very minimal so maybe I'll just make this at uh, 8.1 meters here on second thought I guess I'll just move this uh, interface closer because it seems to me that on second glance uh, yeah it, it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense that it would be that far away so I'll just move it to say 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 
and then we can proceed with the meshing so we can use this refine mesh tool to refine the zone over here so I've already refined it I can hit escape twice and I can click on generate mesh and click on medium distribution here and click on OK and now that we've generated our mesh we can view it over here in the view mesh option and now we can see that this zone here has a much finer mesh than over here so this is what we want and over here is the interface as you can see so for now I'll just keep it as is and then I will see if the results are close enough if not then I'll play around with it more so we can select points for our curves in this uh, mesh tab here so I'll just select one two three four five points here and I'll select one two three four and five and click on update and now moving on to flow conditions it is not mentioned whether or not there is any flow consideration in this uh, journal article so I will just keep it all as dry over here and don't forget to make the pile as dry as well and one thing I do note from the results is that there are quite a few loads being used so there's 200 400, 600, and 800 uh, kilopascals here. And the failure load, it seems to be somewhere in between 400 and 600, so it's about yeah, approximately 500, I would say. And I've determined the loads in kilonewtons already by just multiplying this uh, st stress here by the area of the pile so the area of the pile is just uh, pi over 4 times 0 0.4 meters squared and I will cr create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 new phases so there we go we have 7 phases here and I'll move to the stage construction phase here Actually, I'll need an additional phase so that we can construct the pile. So in the first phase over here, I will activate the pile by just yeah, clicking and dragging the material here. And then I'll click on OK. And it seems that I have to do the same thing as well, unfortunately, to go and analyze this problem. So I will quickly go and assign the pile materials because it seems it doesn't work just now. So now that I've already assigned all the pile materials, I need to go and activate the load starting at phase 2 over here. So I will activate it and type in the load values here so if you want to key in the load values it's best to use the model explorer tab here because if I were to change this load to say 25 kilonewtons you can't really see the other load so it's always best to use the model explorer when you are doing this so phase 2 will have uh, 25 kilonewton load Phase 3 will have a 37 kilonewton load. Phase 4 will have a 50 kilonewton load. And phase uh, 5 will have a 62 kilonewton load.
And phase 6 will have a load of 75 kN. And phase 7 will have a load of 87 kN here. And the final phase will have a load of 100 kN. So in phase 1, since the load has not been applied, the O cell will have the same material as the pile. Now if we've already activated the load, it says here that it is recommended that we need to deactivate the material. So in order to deactivate the O cell region, we need to click on toggle activation and click on the region here where the O cell is. And we need to repeat the process. And one thing that we need to do now is to activate the interface. So it seems that if we scroll down here, that there's a positive interface here here and then down here it seems to be negative so we need to activate them one by one so in this phase one phase we should activate the positive interface only and a small section of the negative interface so it's best to just uh, use the model explorer here because you have finer control so for the negative interface, we only need this small section here. And for the positive interface, every, everywhere else should be activated. And the same goes here as well for phase 2 and the rest. And now that we've already activated our interface, we need to uh, quickly look for other clues here. So you can see that nothing else is mentioned about the stage construction phase. So we need to go and check in the phases here. And we see that we are using K0 here for this uh, calculation type. And for the phases, we'll be using a plastic analysis. From my experience, consolidation will not work because we are using drain conditions in the flow conditions here. And safety, in my experience, uh, although it can get the same or similar results to the paper, it is uh, a little strange in the sense that I didn't see the pile anymore. I saw just the soil. Uh, maybe I'll show you in another video. But anyways, for now, we'll just try plastic analysis. And the pore pressure, uh, we'll just keep it as phreatic. Click on OK and click on calculate here. It should be rather fast because we only have one soil layer and one soil type only. And let's view the results here. So in phase 0, there should be zero deformation. Now we move on. We can see that as the pile is constructed, there's some deformation already. So this is my concern if we actually deactivate a part of the pile for the O-cell as recommended by this journal article here. I personally believe that this, uh, this is not uh, correct in the sense that this should not be happening. But since we do not have additional information on their deformed mesh and how it looks, we cannot comment much really. So if we continue to progress through the phases, we can see that the deformation is still quite small. You can see it's only 1.509 times 10 to the negative 3. And if we go to total displacements and click on new y over here, it is still very small. It's very minimal over here and the deformation seems to be concentrated here and here only. So if we look at this graph over here, we can see that the displacement at failure was about 4 centimeters here. But right now, we are still quite 
uh, ways off. So now let's try a different analysis method. So let's try a safety analysis here. So this safety analysis is also known as the 5C reduction method. So we'll continue to reduce the 5 value until failure occurs. So now that we've already changed it all to safety, we can click on the calculate here. It should take a little longer because uh, this is an iterative process here. So we've already finished our pile analysis and if we scroll down through the phases here, you can see that everything is deactivated. But let's look at the results first. So if we look at phase 8, we can see that the maximum deformation is quite high. And as you can see, the maximum and minimum values are much higher than the plastic analysis since we are basically pushing the soil into failure and you can see this maximum value here is 0 0.06 meters over here almost 0 0.07 so it's getting closer to 0 0.04 although it's on the higher side of things so that's the difficulty about conducting a verification study on a journal article that was done quite a few years ago and the Plaxis version that they used was Plaxis 8.5 if I'm not wrong and we are using Plaxis 21 over here and and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot has changed in terms of the user interface and this journal article doesn't mention what uh, setting they've used here for the calculation type I suspect it's a 5C reduction because it seems to be getting very close to their values but then again I cannot really conclude in a very certain way because I did not write this article and I probably need to continue refining this model before it becomes remotely uh, usable in a sense and that's it for this uh, video today I hope you find it useful and shout out to Abhishek who asked me to make this video and apologize if it took some time because uh, yeah I'm really trying to figure out how they got those values in those articles there and as always I hope you are safe in these unprecedented times and keep learning and goodbye